and the clouds forming again. But I don't think there's going to be any rain before we finish our weekend's racing here. It's been a stunning weekend. Um, delighted to be here at the Haycock Classic Gold Cup. And VIR have hosted us beautifully. Uh, great work by the marshals and all involved as we get ready for our next race, which will be the Mazda Miata Heritage Cup. And always a fan fun favorite. Yeah, looks like we had 17 cars sign up for this one. Anthony Fornetti, I, I, I can tell you he's in a Mazda Miata. <laughs> Nicole Thanks. Cooper Cephalo, she's in a Mazda Miata. Done. Daniel Spangler, Eric Gerchak, Ken Wilkinson, Michael Bond, Robert Rowland, Nathan Pring, Scott, I can't even per begin to pronounce his last name, Kurzastic, Jim Black, Kastic, Kastic, yeah, Kastic. Cool. Alan Massey, Charles Guest, Dennis Mathias, Bill Rowland, David Bain, James Small, and Nate Dos Santos. Well, I'm glad David Bain's had some time off so he can uh, stop doing tricks and actually do some racing. Exactly. So... These date back from 1990 to 2003. Eric Gerchak is in the 2003, and James Small is in the 1990. Vintage Miata Racing. This is really, really fun to watch. Yeah, it seems strange to talk of Miatas, as we, we spoke about this earlier in the weekend, as classics, but they are. Uh, and even though we're talking about 90s cars, now those are pretty, pretty old cars these days. That's 30 years. I know. I guess it just shows our age because we're used to these being modern cars. But, they, but to be honest, again, I mean, we've been talking about different makes and, and, and how they've kept their shape. That's the one thing that Mazda have been so true to the Miata is that you look at a, br a brand new Miata today and it looks no different. Yeah, you would say, oh, I can see how that comes from. But look at the smiles on those cars' faces as they are ready to take the green flag. They are so excited. I, I tell you, they look like, you know, we, we, we joked about having Phil Wicks in here the other day, the man from the Italian job. You could, do, you could do a Japanese version of the Italian job with these, couldn't you? Oh, for sure. So the Maserati pulls away, allowing the rest of the field to get ready to go racing. This is our Mazda Miata Heritage Cup race two from VIR. Expect Anthony Fornetti here in the white and red car to really try to jump out. But Daniel Spangler is going to try to give it to him there in that silver car. But they're going to try to group up behind Anthony Fornetti, really experienced Miata driver as they come down here into turn one. And he's got the run on at the moment, Fornetti. As he dives tires. into turn one. And oh, oh, onto the grass, and there's not coming back from that. Daniel please. Spangler. <coughs> he's going to be singing the Star Spangler banner, banner if he's not careful. <laughs> he managed to recover well, to be honest, because I thought he was going to slip slide right off. That's Robert Rowland in the uh, number 51. And, and most of the drivers in this series know each other really well. They've raced each other everywhere. So it becomes really close racing when you have a class of cars so equally matched and drivers that know each other so well, it becomes really fun to watch. Yeah, I think you should tell the story that you told me yesterday, which I thought quite intriguing, is that when Miata started racing in vintage, they, they sort of came from the ducking and diving, draft bumping, you name it. And, and, and uh, Tony Perella's kind of dialed that out of them. Yeah, there were doubters on both sides. All the vintage racers thought we were ruining vintage racing by bringing Miatas in here, and we have totally proven them wrong there. And then the, vint the Miata racers thought, oh, we can't. We're not vintage racers. Then they came in, and we set the rules of, of uh, try to make your cars look really good. No touching on the, on the racetrack, no contact, no bump drafting. And then the Miata drivers loved it because they could prepare their car once, and they knew that if they were you know, going at Road America into the last turn, they weren't going to get punted for the lead, that everybody had to race them fair and cleanly. And now all of a sudden they're bringing all kinds of their friends over because they're saying this is so much harder to race than Spec Miata. Yeah, and a good full field again. We had even more entries yesterday. Uh, it's been a long weekend for some of them not uh, taking part in this final race, obviously late on a Sunday. And, uh, but we've got a good, strong field, and it's starting to spread out nicely. And at the front, Fanetti in the number 14, 1990 Mazda Miata. The other neat thing that, we, that I love about this, because we have the no contact rules, when we were first staying it, they were saying, oh, it's going to take forever to clean up all the cars in the carnage. And it's really rare now in that because they, they don't really have metal-to-metal -metal contact, and these cars just don't break down. You know, they just really, compared to the old British cars, there aren't really mechanical issues with these cars. No, that's true. So they cross the line again. 
And it is Fornetti building on his lead, although it's not getting away too quickly. The top three pulling away from fourth place. And in fourth place is George Wright. Look at this group right here. Got that orange car trying to peek out. The battle of NA and NB right there. What is NA and NB? NA and NB are the two classes, and uh, I should know this, but I'm guessing the NAs are the ones that with the pop-up headlights, and the NBs are the ones with the headlights already kind of built in, and it's a part of the VIN number, I think. I could be wrong on which is which, but we were asking that at Mid-Ohio, so I had to find that out as well. Well, we're looking at Alan Massey now in the number 80. Oh, gets a little bit sideways there. Chasing the number 53 of Bill Rowland. And it doesn't take long for them to spread out, does it? But you can see the lead group of three, then there's a group of four, uh, soon to be five, uh, snaking their way up the hill past the and spa. I think that's Spangler there side by side trying to make it back up. Here we go, there's that mid group. So that's Ken Wilkinson right there, followed by Robert Rowland in the number 51. And then Jim Black in the 117. That's a good group right there. And if they can stay in a tight group of four, they're going to be really fast and could possibly catch that front group. They just got to work as a team. I was going to say, can you race as a team and sort of, you know, draft together and push yourselves yeah. forward a bit yeah. like a peloton? I've, um, so at the Road America race, I had cameras in uh, the front cars, Anthony Frenetti being one of them, Mark Cephalo, and you can see them kind of like pointing or, hey, let's do this, or they'll work together. Two of them, they need to pass the lead car. The one car in between will point right saying, let's go right, and we'll pass them together. So they'll take the lead car and make him the last car in the train. It's really fun to watch. Yeah, we've just been watching the Tour de France, and of course that is all about doing exactly that, forming a group and forming a peloton and moving faster and forward uh, to catch up with the lead group or – trying to uh, get away from another group. And here they come. Our lead group come across the line. And Scoop Battle's also 7th, 8th and ninth position. Spangler now up to 10. Roland in 11th and Massey in 12th. And this is a great course for these Miatas because uh, it's a tight track. There's not a lot of places to overtake, but given these are smaller cars, at least you've got a chance of maybe making a, a dive here or there. And there's plenty of room there's on right track here. there. Look you at go. That. Exactly, that's what I'm talking about. You wouldn't do that in a, in a big Trans Am car, can but you can it? do it here. Can he hold it? Oh, oh that red car oh. went a little bit deep in there too. Now that's I just fun good. to watch. Bill Rowland then getting around the outside in the 91 Miata. Just slotting himself in that sandwich. Are they all hard tops? Yeah, you know, I, I think so, and I think it's just for aerodynamics. Yeah, I was going to say that they've all painted them different colors, but uh, of course the Miata does have a soft top, but it wouldn't race very well. It would slow you down, really. <laughs> and it's probably heavier, because I'm yeah. guessing those hard tops are fiberglass. And the frames of a convertible ah, top. There we go. Side by side racing here with the one, two, three. Michael Bond. Right there, trying to take over. I think that's Eric Gerchak in that red car. Yep. Should be number 21. They are. Just and, behind uh, there they are. The so white that's car goes first, through. second, third. Yep. So this is the battle for second place. We're watching now down the back straight. Then the next group of fourth, fifth. Then another group to, or two cars at sixth and seventh, side by side. Really great uh, racing between these cars. Wheel to wheel, just as we like it. And you can really see how long this straight is. It's massive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, in my little MG, I'm sure I could have a snack and text some friends on that straight. <laughs> yeah, and be beaten by a whole bunch of Miatas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, in that Peugeot we were watching earlier, it's like four seconds. But in a, you know, in a, in a smaller bore car, it might be uh, well. 30 seconds. <laughs> Nathan Pring in the number 85, and that's Jim Black that he's racing with in the 117. They've exchanged positions several times. They just can't seem to get up to the next group. Yeah, and that uh, Jim Black car is a 99. 177, well, 117, excuse me. Uh, 
at 21 years old. They just seem to be very agreeable to drive. You know, it doesn't yeah. seem to be very many surprises. A lot of fun to drive. It's they're really hard to drive. To be competitive in this class of Mazda Miatas, you have to be a really good driver. You have to hit all of your marks. You have to hit the brakes right at the right time and keep your momentum up because if you lose your momentum, that's everything in these cars. And I have raced a Miata, and I say raced. I've been on a race track and gone at speed with an instructor on one. And what I like about it is exactly what you said. They are easy to drive. Nothing's easy to drive very fast, but they are very forgiving and they give you a lot of information. That's the key. So in a really twitchy race car, you don't have time to react because if you're not a good driver, as I was not. But in these cars, they let you know you're doing something wrong and you need to adjust right now. And, and it gives you time to adjust and keep going without spinning the car or going off or whatever you might be doing. So they're very forgiving is the best way I can put yeah. it. So second and third, they're swapping positions quite a bit, but Anthony Fornetti's just keeping that comfortable lead up there. But look at um, fourth and fifth, just really close on a train back there. Isn't that a fabulous shot from up there? That is cool. Really, really good. Oh, is he about to get him? I think so. He's coming Eric to the end Gertzak. off there. There no. we go. No, not quite. Just under braking, he lost out. Nice late braking into uh, the roller coaster. That's a fabulous shot. Really great to see from so far and high above. And the 21 still pushing hard. Eric Greschek in the uh, 2003 version. So if you want to get involved in yeah. this uh, Heritage Miata class, these cars are available because basically there were three, 400, 500, probably 1,000 of these things racing in America. And then as the Miatas, you know, as the New Year's came on, these older cars got obsoleted. But let me tell you, the great thing about vintage cars is once they've been built, they never get obsoleted. This is the class for these vintage cars. You know, this is the group right here. So go and get yourself one of these. You can find them for very inexpensive turnkey race cars and come out here and have some fun with us. And I promise you, if you spend a good year, season or two in a Mazda Miata, you will become a really good driver. Yep, Ken Wilkinson having a great battle here with the 57. Uh, of just checking what 51 sorry the 51 that's what threw Robert me Robert Roland, Roland yes and a good battle all the way through they've been at each other's throats the whole race so far Massey still in the top 10 but only just you know I like cars with smiles on them <laughs> you look at, like, the new cars, the new BMWs, the new Camaros, the new Mustangs. Sulky. They have frowns. They look like they're angry. Yeah. But I love the Bug Eye Sprites, the Mazda Miatas, the old um, BMWs, the, the, the VW Beetles that look like they're smiling. It's a bit like the car's film, yeah? You can tell they're smiling. I like the uh, livery on that number. Livery, sorry. On You've got to get that one. You've got to get you on Scott. that one. Scott. It's Scott Krastek. Let's just call him Scott K. Scott K. Okay, Special K. Coming down the back straight. And the clock ticking down on this race yet again. They don't get too long to go at it, so they don't want to make mistakes because they'll run out of time to race. Yeah, I wonder where Spangler is now. Let's see he how he's made it He was in the top ten only just. Yeah, he's made it to ninth. Not bad. Fonetti, though, now extending his lead, 2.6 seconds. Michael Bond. I wonder if he introduces himself as Bond, Michael Bond. <laughs> How would he not? I'm sure he has over time. He's currently in second, is Michael. He's lost his uh, running mate there, Eric Gerchak, in that red car. They were running really close and probably catching Anthony, but now they're out of the draft. Look at this group. Yeah, good three-way battle, and the, at the back of it, the 117 of Jim Black. So silver seems to be the dominant color in our Heritage Miata yeah. special right now. Best lap so far, Michael Bond at a 219.7, but that uh, was bettered by Anthony Fanetta, the leader, leader of 219.4, so only a couple of tenths quicker, but he's now some 
seconds up the road in terms of the lead. But everybody pretty much putting best laps in of just under 220, 219, low 219s is some of the best laps we've seen. We just saw Daniel Spangler make another pass there. And in fact, that was he's the fastest man out on track at the moment, Spangler. And I hope the vintage racers that were haters for the last couple of years about this are watching this and watching the, the other drivers give them room. They're giving wave buys, point buys. They're vintage racing Mazda Miatas. What everybody said was impossible, we're seeing right now with our own eyes is totally possible. It's good racing. It's gentleman racing, respectful racing but it is wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing like we expect from vintage racing. Well, there's no uh, ifs and buts about it. These cars are now vintage cars, even though the Miata continues to roll out uh, fantastic cars um, that are similar looking. Um, uh, th these definitely are vintage cars, no question. Yeah, they definitely haven't gone away from their formula, and it's a, it's a working formula. And, you know, there's been other companies that have tried – uh, to come back out with a small two-door sports car BMW did for a while, the Porsche Boxster. And I'm not saying those are unsuccessful, but they don't have the sales as the Mazda Miata. Yeah, the Lotus Elan is another one. Yeah, the new Fiat 123, 124, 124, I think. Back in 53, Bill Rowland currently in 12th position as he comes out of 12 and down the back straight. Daniel Spangler in eighth place. I can't believe the changing conditions over the weekend. <laughs> it was pouring down on Friday. And this is the final lap of our Mazda Miata Heritage Cup. Final lap for them of the weekend. Putting on a good show, as Ben points out. They've come under some stick in the... Uh, Scott Previous K. years, but I think they've established themselves now. Scott, Scott K rocking those blue wheels. That's, yes. That's pretty cool. Ken Wilkinson just ahead here of the 51 of Robert Rowland. And they've been Ooh, battling all look at that. race. And Daniel uh, Spangler another. trying to make a next pass. Come on. Let's see if he can get like into sixth. Last lap. He's going to go for it. He's he has the seventh. fastest lap already. Yeah, he's in seventh place. He spun at one at the start, <clears> and he's <throat> had to work his way all the way through. Yes, he's done a good job. And here comes your leader, Anthony Fornetti. He took the lead right from the get-go and has not been passed and not been uh, really challenged. It was closer at the start, obviously. First couple of laps he was under pressure, but since then he's built and built on that lead. And he now carries uh, an almost two and a half second lead over the rest of the field. Down the back straight for the last time. He is a really good racer. I've put some cameras in his cars before in past events, and he's just really respectful, but he puts the car in the right place. He loves racing in a pack, and he's really good at it. Like He, can, he has really unbelievable car control that he... And Mark Cephalo and a few others can race door-to-door, wheel-to-wheel -door, -wheel without touching. And uh, it's really fun to watch. If you go to our YouTube channel, you can see some of these. Just, just look up our Mazda Heritage on our YouTube from Road America. There's some great battles with he and about four other cars at Road America. I've decided what this course reminds me of a little bit. Donington Park, the Crane of Curves coming out of um, Roller Coaster. Very similar. Uh, it's not a similar setting than Donington, but uh, very similar in its outlay. There's the checkered flag, Dan, for Anthony Finetti as he takes an excellent win here at the IR. A memorable one ahead of Michael Bond in second place. Gerchak in third, and then Wilkinson, Roland, and Pring. And let's see, Spangler. Yes, he did get up to seventh, but he didn't make it into the top six, but it was a dash good try at doing so. But well done to our winner, Anthony Finetti. Little wave to him and to the crowd. And there is a little bit of crowd smattered around, you know, almost waving to the marshals at this point. Or family and friends. But that's that's what they're supposed to do. You know, they're thanking the corner workers, keeping yep. them safe. We'd like to thank all of the corner workers that are out here today. And if you really like motorsports, find your local SCCA chapter volunteer to be a corner worker yep. or a marshal it's a great way to get into racing it's a great family community atmosphere and uh, we need it all racing communities need it and you, you never know you may be marshalling a, 
an IMSA race, a NASCAR race, you know, everybody needs corner marshals. And if you come out and you uh, volunteer and give your time, uh, you can learn so much. But it's great group of friends at all the tracks that we go to that are the corner marshals, and, and they seem to have a wonderful time. I love always bumping into a bar of marshals at the end of a day and listening to them swap stories because they just seem to have as much fun as the races because they were like, did you see that crash at turn four? No, I was at turn seven. We had a real big off, and you know, and they're on they go, and it's great. They enjoy their day out just yeah. as much as anybody else. You don't have to be a racing driver. So confirmation of the result, Anthony Fonetti takes the win over Michael Bond, Eric Gerchak in third position, Ken Wilkinson fourth, Roland in fifth, then Nathan Pring, Daniel Spangler, the man who went off, recovered to seventh place, ahead of Scott Kraszczak in eighth position, Alan Massey ninth, and Dennis Mathias in tenth position. So that ends the Mazda Miana Heritage Cup feature race two, and we'll have a short break again, and we'll be back with more action from VIR. Join us in a moment.